Hi, it's um, November 10th, 2020, and I just wanted to give uh, an update on what's going on. It's been a rough time, and if you've uh, listened to the other videos, you know Sierra admitted to uh, the hospital on the 25th of October, and she's been there since. And yesterday, uh, there was a hearing to decide if she'd be released or basically, um, sent to the state facility, which is what her dad and I are really trying to avoid because we waited so long for her placement in this residential home that she would lose her spot there. So for us, the best case scenario would be to be able to return there. So if she gets sent to the state facility, that's not going to happen. Uh, but this hospital is short term, so she also can't stay there very long. And in my mind, I'm not sure they're going to be able to, uh, from what I've seen in the past, get her out of the manic state within the amount of time that she would be allowed to stay there. So I don't know. I don't know what the winning situation is. I guess we just kind of want to keep her out of the state facility for um, a lot of reasons. And for me, it's like that's the very last place to be that's you know that's basically you're going to prison in my mind if you're going there because you're gonna lose all your rights you're gonna lose any hope of getting out finding a job anything like that I think we all know that so anyway her dad and I are going for emergency guardianship um, we did this once before well I did this once before and I did get it, uh, but I didn't go for permanent because by the time that came around, she was in her right state of mind. I was told I probably wouldn't get it at that point anyway. So her dad and I are going for emergency together. Um, he was kind enough to fill out uh, the paperwork. And so that's our plan. Uh, we, he just got the paperwork in yesterday, so I'll keep you updated on that. Um, but the psychiatrist and anyone involved agrees that's what we need to do at this point. And yesterday was the hearing and she actually gave her father permission to attend the hearing and to um, speak at the hearing. So that was huge. Uh, she's still not speaking to me at all and she's informed everyone that she has no family at all. Um, but apparently, she has her father. At some point yesterday, she was calling him by his first name saying she wanted to speak to her father. So she's clearly still in a delusional state of mind. Um, anyway, because of COVID, the hearing was via video and it was her, her dad, her attorney, who's been wonderful, two of her doctors, uh, somebody from DHHS, uh, and of course the judge and so her dad was kind enough to FaceTime me so I was able to attend without anyone's knowledge um, so I could hear and see what was going on for the most part uh, so I, I took notes and I'm just gonna really try to be brief but it started with the lady that is in charge of uh, the group home program transitional housing uh, they offer mental health room and board. Uh, they have a psychiatric registered nurse. They have 24 hour staff. Uh, it is voluntary placement. Um, and they, the question was, would she be able to return there uh, upon release? Uh, she said they're not required to hold her bed for over 30 days. And um, that would have, they'd have to get permission for that. Uh, but she would have to be in a stable condition to return because they're the ones that actually had called the police to take her to the hospital. And apparently, uh, and I think I mentioned this before, but she had ripped out a fire extinguisher. I didn't realize she had gone through other people's rooms and rummaged through their property. Uh, that was a little bit of a blow. She died. That I don't know why it surprises me. Nothing should surprise me at this point. But anyway, um, yes, yeah, she'd be welcome back, but it would take some work to work with the residents of the household to gain their trust and yeah. Uh, then it, they spoke to the psychiatrist who 
has seen her on a daily basis, agrees she has bipolar disorder. Uh, she refuses medication sometimes. She's not really improved at this point. Uh, she would be at risk if she were to leave the facility. She's been uncooperative, throwing things at staff. She has no insight, impaired judgment, doesn't want to take medication on a regular basis. They've had psychiatric emergencies where they've had to actually administer a medication against her will. Um, he thinks she should remain inpatient for a maximum period of three weeks with uh, the same medications and does recommend she go back to the group home. Now, I just wanna pause for a moment and say, this is what her dad and I were hoping for. And although three weeks is not um, a long time from what I've seen with her, that's the maximum they can go. Otherwise she would automatically either be discharged with which was not going to happen or be sent to the state facility. So they had to say three weeks because that's the maximum stay at this hospital. So um, that's our best case scenario and we really need to pray for this. Uh, it spoke to another doctor who completely agreed. Uh, both doctors said her medication compliance has not been great and that she needs to stop taking the marijuana, stop with the marijuana. Um, they both reiterated this several times, which, you know, we all know, but I just wish it would sink in with her. Said that she functions well on lithium. He agreed she should return to the group home. Then they did speak to uh, see dad, who um, one of their first questions was, what is it like when she's not manic? And he sort of broke down into tears. It was quite sad. Said she's a kind, caring, lovely, loving, truly gifted artist and dancer. Spoke her praises, which were all truths of how she is when she's not manic. And yeah, that was heartbreaking. And then see speak briefly. Uh, didn't make a whole lot of sense. Introduced herself, said she was born in Portland, conceived in Scarborough. Uh, her dad cheated on her mom, so her mom had some miscarriages, which is not accurate. Obviously, in her mind, it is. Uh, just sort of went on and on to say she agrees to be voluntary. She will stay uh, up to three days. She just doesn't want to be committed. Um, so that was her stance. And I've got to say, throughout it, she, being that she's clearly in a manic state, she did okay. Her attorney was able to calm her down a few times. She was writing uh, really quickly and holding up signs saying, I want to go home, or and I couldn't really read what she was saying, but holding up signs for the judge. And she did try to uh, intervene a couple times, but for the most part in her state, I think she did fairly well. So at the end, the judge spoke. Uh, it was a female and she seemed really sweet actually. She started with, this really breaks my heart and I feel for you all. This case in particular, I'm feeling a lot of empathy and I just have to state this is a really sad situation. And of course that it felt good in some ways because this is a judge who hears a lot of cases and to me it's been a living nightmare it's been the worst possible thing that could happen in my life i think so it was sort of this validation from somebody who hears this a lot um that it is a really sad unfortunate situation uh but she did grant the three weeks day up to three weeks so no more than three weeks uh, and then returning to the group home, which is what we were hoping for. Again, for me, the three weeks isn't a long period from what I've seen. So I, I, I just don't wanna see them release her too soon and have to go back. And then I, I think it's pretty much a one way ticket to uh, the state hospital. Anyway, at the very end, I just have to add this because I know a lot of you have been through this final words were she didn't have any family but she did have her dad who was okay and that her mom is dumb as fuck oh her dad's really smart her mom is dumb as fuck so 
yeah, those were the parting words from my cherub. Of course it stings, it's always going to, but at the same time, I just had to chuckle. It's like, you, you become immune to uh, this type of thing because you're so used to it, I guess, but it wasn't exactly what I wanted to hear <laughs> for her parting words, but it's okay. I'm still gonna fight and I'm still gonna uh, think positive because that's all we can do. And I will keep you updated on um, the guardianship. So I'm hoping that gets granted and we can actually speak to the medical staff and the staff at the home and really get her back on a track for getting healthy again. So thank you all for listening. I, I love you all and I know what you're going through and I hope this helps somebody. Hi there. I wanted to hop on briefly uh, because I was inspired to do so. Um, really quick, I am, I have never been a religious person and I can probably count on one hand how many times I've been to church. So I wasn't uh, brought up, I was brought up to believe in God, but not um, the church taught God, I guess. Um, so for the past, geez, probably been almost 10 years now, I've been reading and I I stopped for a while and I reread it. But anyways, it's this book, it's A Course in Miracles and it's really helped me. I started reading it before I was diagnosed. It, it, it helped me through just becoming more spiritual, but I've since re been rereading it and it's honestly what's helping me through uh, this horrific time of watching her go through psychosis and her transitioning from the little girl I knew, know, and love uh, into someone I don't recognize. Um, and sometimes I'll read passages in the book and it's like, oh, it's like God's talking to me and trying to tell me something. and. I feel compelled to share it um, with you. So I was reading today and uh, in it, it says, um, well, let's see. This is called The Dynamics of the Ego and it talks a lot about, uh, the whole book is about ego versus spirit and ego um, is something we've created that's not real, that keeps us, down um, whereas spirit is connected to God and yeah that's it in a nutshell I don't want to go too much into that but um, it said the case for insanity is strong to the insane for reasoning ends at its beginning and no thought system transcends its source yet reasoning without meaning cannot demonstrate anything and those who are convinced by it must be deluded so if we're convinced of insanity, we are deluded, but it's really difficult, isn't it? When um, we're looking at it sometimes straight in the face. Uh, every brother you meet becomes a witness for Christ or for the ego, depending on what you perceive in him. So um, we should be perceiving Christ in our children and not the ego and it's our choice what we're going to perceive. We have that power. Uh, everything you perceive is witness to the thought system you want to be true. Every brother has the power to release you if you choose to be free. So, we choose how we wanna see our children or, or anyone with a mental illness. Um, we're creating that and we have the power to set it free. And I guess that's what I want to share today. I had this thought about my daughter who, you know, appears completely disengaged with the world and out of touch. And I kind of thought she is the epitome of what the, they're talking about, the ego. It's like, I'm looking at the ego straight in the face when I am dealing with her and her psychotic state of mind. Um, and I, I kind of thought about all of us 
uh, we all have egos. We don't look at it. Um, like her having this illness has forced me to look it in the face and to love her beyond her acting in that manner. Um, because it's my child and all of you are in the same situation. You love your child uh, and you don't see that as your child. And in a way, it's like, maybe that's why this is happening. This is an, an awakening for myself. Um, I have an ego as well. It's on a, a smaller scale and I, I wouldn't acknowledge it if I didn't see it on that huge scale right in front of me of this person that I love. And my choice is going to be to release that and to look at her in a different light. And if I can look at her in a different light when she is in my face saying horrible things and if I can look at that and realize that's not her, I have a piece of God, she has a piece of God, we all have the same inner light shining. And if I choose to see that light and not see the darkness, perhaps this is a lesson uh, to be learned. And I'm really going to harness that and I'm really going to start envisioning her light and looking through that darkness. And I'm going to record it and we're going to see what happens because I do have the power and I'm going to do anything in my power to get through this and to get you guys through this. So I am envisioning my daughter in her right state of mind, calling me, talking to me, telling me she wants to get better. And I think we're gonna see a change because my mind is made up. I'm just, I, I know this is going to happen. She is going to call me. She is going to want to change and we are gonna help her make that change. And when she does, and when we see um, progress and when we see healing, then I'm gonna share this with all of you. And you're going to have that same power to make that change for your loved one.